This is the Center for Research in Igbo History and Culture. And today is Saturday, the 30th of January 2021. We are here at Mbede Umweri uh, for a chat with uh, somebody I admire so much, a scholar, an artist, and everything that a historian of note. I'm sure that you would like to meet him. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. Yes, sir. Would you um, tell us a few things about yourself? I am Matthias Anauku. I studied history of art in the University of Nigeria in Osaka. I in my scholarship in uh, art history, I understood the difference between paradigmatic approach to history and historiography. Historiography is a very difficult approach to history because it is well grounded. You have to ask yourself a lot of questions, answer them, and uh, get into whatever you are studying and find a better answer for it, other than going paradigmatically where you start telling us that uh, uh, tortoise is the father of uh, and, in, and, uh, and you look, you find out that there is no relationship between tortoise and the uh, uh, one uh, 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 There's no way tortoise can marry a praying mantis. Uh, two of them cannot cohabit as husband and wife. You know, be their choice. Eh? You know, be their choice. <laughs> now you won't marry. Is it not their marry? Uh, now you're marry. But they, 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 they cannot cohabit. Uh, they can marry. It concerns you. Uh, well, uh, well. But, uh, Tortoise wants to marry praying mantis. And uh, what child will they beget? Nadia, uh, uh, whatever uh, God uh, gives that them. That one is not there. They mm. can choose to marry, but they cannot decide what they will beget. If tortoise will give birth to tortoise, pray mantis will give birth to If person will get AS, uh, go marry person will get SS. She if they no born uh, SSS, then go born uh, they are CID. Human beings. They are human beings. Uh, Historiographically, you know that this person has SS and the other person has maybe AS. Anything where they born, they go. Anything where they where they born, they go. And carry them like that. They now. happen to have gotten a, a, a sickle seller. Mm. Uh, so, it is historiographic. Mm. You have well-founded information to give. But you cannot tell me that Tortoise and Praying Mantis got married. And you refuse to change. You continue saying Tortoise and Praying Mantis got married and they became the father and the mother of a, uh, uh, let me put it, Mweri, for instance, or, or Kuzu, and so on and so forth. That is uh, too paradigmatic to accept. But historiographically, you go into the language of the people, you go into uh, relationships and establish what you yeah, a, a moment, sir. A moment, sir. Thank you very much for your, you have actually broadened my knowledge and appreciation of these things a lot now let's take this you are uh, mr um yeah anu mr Mathias. Yeah. mr anu Mathias. you are a product university of nigeria you studied fine art at history at history at history is critical appreciation of art of art and yes. uh, things and uh, you have some background in history 
Background in history. Okay. Now there's something I concern. We are here at the Center for Research in Igbo History and Culture. Our interest, our focus is Igbo history and culture. In your studies of history and art history and all the rest of them, did you have time to look to consider Igbo history specifically? Yes. Uh, would, are you in a position to tell us one or two things about Igbo history? I started studying the history of my town, Mweri, as a child in the secondary school. Okay, before we get to uh, the history of Mweri, uh, I would like to discuss with us about the Igbo people, like we said. Who are the Igbos? Where did they come from? The Igbo people are multi group. Let me put it that way. For instance, you have the Agolo people, you have the Isu people, you have the Eri people, you have the uh, Achala people, for instance. You have all those people. And they lived together within the geographical area called Igbo land. And these people, in a course of history, you have wars, you have famine, you have uh, uh, epidemics, which can make them choose to migrate. And you have, of course, all over the world in the 19, 1880s, 18th, 17th, 18th century, for instance, and part of the 19th century was era of migration. People were migrating from their location to other places. And that era of migration did not leave Igbo land out. Igbo people were migrating, settling in places. Osisin no no flaroma kona kwane. Yes. Uh -huh. For instance, you have some people who are now Mweri people. But they were not originally Moere people. But in the course of integration, they have come together and they are one people. Yeah, I can understand that. I can appreciate that. Yes. And you have Agulu people spread all over. You have Agulu Zibo. You have Agulu... You have a Goloka. If you come to Umuoka, you have a Goloka there too. You have a, a Golomana. You have a, 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 a Golezechuku. I think Agolo people are very interesting people. They appear to be the index. When you see wherever an Agolo person stays, you find out that there is a something going on there. So are you saying, sir, that the Aglo people are a separate people Quite. from other Igbo groups? Yeah, of course. That the Aglo people are separate from the Eri group? Sure, definite. How, how is that? Could you shed a few more light? I, I told you. Osisin nonofla roma kona kwane. Aglo people may have come into Umweri and settled in Umweri. There's one other... Before the arrival that, of the Umweri people or after the arrival of the Umweri people? Of course, the Umweri people were not so migrants. They were staying wherever they are. You they have know, always uh, been where they are. Yes. Uh, uh, Tostan Shaw, yes. the, the historian, the uh, archaeologist that studied Ibuhu culture, hmm. said that the Mweri people 
It is in one of his writings. Yes. Mweri people lived in the plain of the Anambra River. From prehistoric times. From prehistoric times. He was talking So about, you are saying that the Umweri people have talking, always been where they are. They are aborigines. He was talking about an art that is more than a thousand years old. He was saying that the Umweri people are likely to be the artists of the Buhu art. The producers of the Buhu the art. producers of the Buhu art. Yes. That they motivated or produced the Buhu art. Yes. The people of the... And that they lived in the plain of Anambra River. So that is to say that they are indigenous, they are, they are, they are, they are aborigines uh, of the place where they are. That is what uh, Thorst and Shaw may be claiming. Mm. Of course, he's... So artist. if they, if they are... And the people, white men, when they came to uh, Nigeria, when they came to the eastern Nigeria, came to Igbo land, they did a real groundwork. They know about the Eri clans. And the Eri clans are spread all over. You have already. Just a moment before we come to that. Uh, now you are talking about the Aglo people, Aglo group of peoples, as a separate people than the Eri group. Of course. And you are saying that it's possible that the Aglo, Aglo people spread, you the, know, because spread, you are talking about not, that period of not, migrations. It's not. You were talking about that period when the, when the whole world seemed to be in a state of flux. People were moving here and there, here and there. Right. Migrations, counter migrations, reverse migrations, and right. all the rest of them happening everywhere. And that this would have happened to those other groups mm. among the Igbos, yeah. like the Agulo mm -hmm. group. And which other group would you say? You have talked about the Agulo people. You talked about the people, Isu. It's another group. Yeah. It's another. It's you another know, group. You see, Suchi. Yes. You see Isu and Yocha. Mm. You see uh, Isu Nochi. So that's they another have, group. They have, they and the Eri group is another group. Eri group is it's another, another group. group. So we've got like three. Can we have another one or two more? Or is that all the groups? Um, well, uh, you see, uh, you have uh, the Nsoka people, for instance. They are there. Mm. Izi people are Iza people. They are there. Mm -hmm. eh? And... Uh, uh, let me not start going down to Arochuku and so forth, on and so forth. Mm. You have the arrows, they are there. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, you are saying that it's likely that this, some of these groups, in the course of their migrations and movements, moved into the area, into the Umweri area, area, area into course, the area enclave. Course. And that can explain the, the presence of some of them. Yes. You know? But you are Whatever saying that happened. as at this time, they moved that the Umweri people, the present Umweri people, were already um, Aboriginal. They were already settled here. Yes. Yes. That, uh, that is following the Tost and Shaw's, Tost and Shaw's uh, claims mm -hmm. and things. Okay. Professor so Tost eventually these ones came. Okay. Now there has always been this um, this um, problem of Aguleri and the uh, Umweri. Would you say that the Aguleri people because they trace their own ancestry to a man Agulo. Would you say that they are part of the Agulo people that moved? When you talk like about I Agulo say, group of people, would like, you include Agulo like, among them? It is the same Agulo. Agulo is a prefix following the English studies. Agulo is a prefix. Eri is a suffix. Mm -hmm. Agulo, Eri. Okay, so that when you are talking about the Agulo people now, you are talking about Aguleze Chuku, Aguloka. You have Agulo Mana. Yes. You have Agulo diaspora. Agulo in different places. In so many places. Including Agulo. Agulozibo. Agulozibo. Of course. Including Agulo. I mean, people. let me not preempt anything. Yes. But Agulo mm -hmm. cannot single themselves out where you have instances of the other Agulo groups. Agulos. Yeah, that it, are it everywhere. And one interesting thing is this. Mm. If you get to Aguleri, mm. if you go to Oka, compare Aguleri and Oka, mm. you have Umuoku Oka. Mm. 
And within Mokwaka, next to Mokwaka, you have a Gulwaka. Eh? That is what you have there. If you go to Aguleri, you have Opu, a village in Aguleri. They were not, they are not called Umu, they call themselves Opu. Eh? Yes. You go to Agulo itself, you see Opu Ifita Agulo. Which appears to be distinct from Agulo. Agulo is there. Opu Ifita Agulo is there. Another large community in Agulo. In Agulo. Mm. So you see the movement of Agulo is always with the Opu people. Mm. And you go to Oka, you see Umu Opu. Oka. You see Aguloka. And you come to Aguleri. You see Opu. And you see Agulo. Eh? Opu people don't call themselves Opu. Eh? That is an interesting thing. They don't call themselves Opu. And they don't. Agulo, Aguleri happens to call themselves Aguleri. I mean, that, that does not be cloud history. It is quite linguistic. You do not start telling me that uh, Aguleri is uh, 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 just the name of a person. That is too paradigmatic to accept historical, histor history-wise. It's too paradigmatic. But when you follow the fact that you have prefix and suffix. You have prefix agulo. Eri. Is the suffix. So, the aguleri that is aligned with Attached eri. to. Attached to. Let me not say attached. Mm. Aligned with eri. Mm. Just as you have aguleze chuku. Mm. Aguluzibu. Mm. Agulo mana, agulo oka. Agulo is always a, a prefix. That is, and it's an index. It points that there is a tradition there mm -hmm. that can accommodate mm -hmm. uh, them. Oka accommodated them elaborately. I don't know who these Uzibos are. Eze Chuku, I don't know who they are. Those may be lost in the morass of time. No, Eze Chuku is not lost. Eze Chuku, their history is very, very clear. Uh, is but uh, I'm not going to bring it. Eze Chuku? Yes, the, 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 the Eze Chuku people, uh, I, I wouldn't want to go into that because uh, you, you are, you are, it's what you know that, you know. But uh, let me just stop saying that the Eze Chuku people, there are actually and as a Chufu people who settled in that place under certain circumstances that if I begin to describe, then we'll go out outside of uh, how, how now become I, the person that's being interviewed. That yes, no problem, no problem, it's just that. But I agree with your analysis. Agulo is a Agulo is Agulo, different kinds of Agulo. Agulo is always a suffix. It's always the prefix. I, did, I uh, haven't uh, met them where they are. We are the stand alone. Okay, the only place they... A suffix is opu ifitago. Mm. Mm. But that is within agolo itself. Yes. You have opu ifite agolo. That, that, that's okay. That is the only oh, place I know okay. them. Um, now, um, now. So that tries to say that agolo mm. is the parent culture yes. in, uh, uh, with opu ifite agolo. Yes. Uh, Agulo is the parent culture there. Mm. They are the index. The mm. upper people mm. are with them. Okay. What should be established is what keeps 
agulo and all people together. Together all the time as they all move. The time, in the, in a kind of age look age, age in a kelly or kelly uh -huh. <laughs> well, you have them why well, yes in Oka. Yes. If it uh uh, uh Umo U. Yes. And Agulo Oka. Yes. You have them there. Yes. You have them in Aguli itself. Yeah, Aguli itself. And you have them here in Umwer. In Aguleri. In Aguleri, yes. I mean to say. Yes. So, it's, why are they thinking always about. together? Mm. Agulu people will help to answer that question. Mm. Mm. I thank you for that. It's really enlightening. It's something to think about. And I think it's something to inquire more about. Uh, maybe the Aguleri people themselves will be able to help us, or the Agulu people, any of them. But we will come to that. Now, um, Quickly, let's look at, you mentioned that the Agulu people are one people, and you have mentioned their branches. And then you are talking about, the, you mentioned also about the Eri, Eri group, yes. you know, and their shootouts, their offshoots as they begin to shoot out to different communities. Mm -hmm. okay. So what other, this Eri, how would you say that they spread to where? You go to Nteja, you have uh, uh, if it, uh, if it um, were in Nteja. In Interjadia is an yes. ifite umweri. Yes. If it umweri. So within Interjadia is umweri. Yes. Yes. You go to Okuzu, you have ifite umweri Okuzu. Still in Okuzu, there is an yes. umweri community in Okuzu. Community there. In Okuzu. Yes. Okay. You go to Obunike, mm -hmm. you have uh, you have uh, umweri Obunike. We are our big brother, uh, uh, Dr. Chuba Kadibo is from uh, uh, Mweri Obunike. You mean that? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you have Oreri. Mm -hmm. Oreri yes. is a town in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I so you are saying that this same um, every group of people are moving out. Yes. From Umwere as epicenter. No, 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 no. Do not say they are moving out. Mm -hmm. Because that is a question that may be lost in the morass of time. Yes. Timeless time. Yes. During, in the timeless time, you cannot establish the history. Yes. So you do not say these people moved out. But you remember you have famine, you have pestilence, mm -hmm. you have war. Yes. That can make people move away from their location from the epicenter. and settle in a safer place. Yes. You have Mbiri. Mm. I always challenge uh, my Mbiri friend. Mm. Do not say that uh, Mbiri is not a culture. Mm. You don't say that Mbiri is not a... They, they, they will always tell you that uh, Mbiri is Mbiri. Mm. Which is, uh, I, I, I want to take a break now. We'll come back to this same thought, to this same thread. We'll come back to this. Just let's just take a break for a second. <laughs> 